Today, we're going to create a user interface for our ERC-20 token smart contract. In the Bob token exchange, we'll have a list of all the accounts and their associated balances. To transfer tokens between accounts, we simply enter the account addresses and the amount being transferred. So in this case, we'll transfer one token from the first account to the last account. And you can see that the transfer is happening. The focus of this video will be on using web3.js to interact with a local or remote Ethereum node. In my case, I'm running Ganache locally on my desktop. Since the primary focus of this video is on web3.js and not on front-end development, I'll be using very simple tools such as HTML, jQuery, and asynchronous JavaScript with promises. These are pretty basic skills that most web developers already know. So by keeping things simple, we can focus on the logic in web3.js. Basically, our UI will display the balances of all the accounts and will allow people to transfer coins between accounts. And after the transfer of coins, we will update the user interface to reflect the new balances. Let's revisit the ERC20 interface for a second. Basically, these are all the functions that our contract is implementing. Our simple UI is only going to use two of these functions, balance of, which will check the balance of an Ethereum address, and transfer, which will allow transferring tokens to a certain address. For this demo, since I'm running Ganache locally on my desktop, I'll point Web3 to localhost 8545. Since Ganache gives us 10 dummy accounts, I'll use the first account in the list as the default account. Lastly, we need web3.js to be aware of the ABI for our smart contract and also the address of our smart contract. ABI stands for Application Binary Interface. Whenever we compile Solidity code into bytecode that can be executed by the Ethereum virtual machine, we also get the ABI. Basically, it's just JSON that documents the names and types that are going to be used by the smart contract operations. Now let's look at the JavaScript code. First, there's a helper method called getBalance, which will get the balance of an account. This contract variable represents an instance of our contract, and we're going to call this method on our contract called balanceOf. So this is the ERC20 method balanceOf, which will get the balance of an account. This is an asynchronous method, and after we get the balance, then we're going to return this JavaScript list, which contains the account and the balance. Next, we have a helper which will update the user interface to reflect the updated balances. This helper is going to use Web3 to get the list of accounts. Then it's going to loop through the first four accounts and get the balance associated with that account. And then it will create a list of promises. After all the promises are fulfilled, then we are going to take the resulting account and balances and update our table in HTML. Finally, we will use jQuery to update the HTML. Lastly, we have a helper method to transfer coins between accounts. As you saw in our UI, we have boxes for the sender and the recipient and the amount of coins being transferred. So we'll grab the values of those boxes and then we're going to call the ERC20 method transfer on our contract. And we're going to pass in the recipient and the amount that is being sent. If there is any error, then we'll log an error. Otherwise, we are going to log to the console saying, this number of tokens was transferred from the sender to the recipient. And then we're going to refresh the user interface to reflect the new balances. Now let's look at the code in Visual Studio. We have only two files. One is our HTML file and the second one is our JavaScript. In the HTML file, we have very simple HTML and it's going to reference the CDNs for jQuery and for web3.js. And also our JavaScript code, which is bobtoken.js. Let's look at bobtoken.js. When the page first loads, we are going to call the refresh accounts user interface method to load the table displaying all the balances. Here we have the code that I showed earlier in the presentation, get balance, refresh accounts, UI, transfer coins. So none of that is new, you've seen that before. And here is where we're going to insert our ABI JSON and also the address of our smart contract. So how can we get the ABI? We can get the ABI for a smart contract by compiling the smart contract. In this directory, we have our ERC20 smart contract code. In an earlier video, I showed that when I call truffle compile, it will compile the code. And in the builds folder, we can see the builds artifacts. And in bob.json, we can find the ABI for our smart contract. The code is quite long, about 10,000 lines. So let me copy this into a JSON viewer so that it's more easy for us to see what's in it. 
After pasting bob.json into this JSON viewer, we can see the different parts of this JSON file, and there is a section here for the ABI. So now let's copy and paste the ABI from bob.json into our JavaScript. Now let's paste in the ABI. Next, we have to pass in the address of our smart contract. To get the address of our smart contract, I'm going to start Ganache and then deploy our contract. Now that our smart contract is deployed in Ganache, I can see the smart contract address here. Now let's paste in the smart contract address. When I open the HTML page in my browser, the UI looks about right. We have the list of accounts and we have fields for the sender, the recipient, and the amount being transferred. Since I had just deployed this smart contract, we can see that 1 billion tokens have been given to the first account and the other accounts have no tokens in them. This makes sense because when I deployed the smart contract, I was deploying from that account, 55A39B. So now let's test it out. So I'll take the first account and the second account, and I'll transfer one token, and that worked. If we open up the JavaScript console, we can see that our print statement is also working. So let's transfer five tokens between these accounts. And there's our log statement. Let's also try transferring from the second account to the last account. Let's transfer one token. And that also worked. If we look at the Ganache CLI, we can see that transferring tokens also calls the block number to be incremented. And lastly, you'll see that if we try to transfer tokens from an account that has no tokens to another account, then we'll get an error because the balance is insufficient. So here we can see ERC20, transfer amount exceeds balance, and the transaction was reverted. Thank you for watching, and if you found this useful, please give a like and subscribe. The code will be available in GitHub, and if you have any questions or ideas for what videos I should do next, please definitely leave a comment below.